Hi, and welcome to season three of Conversations with Sophia, sponsored by the Via Heme Art House. I am delighted today to be sitting in Premier Crew Boutique Wine Store with none other than Mr. Kyle Stubbs, who is the resident sommelier for Bristol Wines and Spirits. Today we are going to be talking about Sauvignon Blanc. We're going to be exploring this particular wine along with some food dishes that I can't wait to taste. And um, we're just going to have fun this season with our resident sommelier. So we will be right back as we get into our conversation today. Hi, and welcome back to our segment today. We are here again with Mr. Kyle Stubbs from Bristol Wines and Spirits. And we're going to combine today um, our conversation on wines and food. But at first, we're going to talk about wines. Now, Mr. Stubbs, this is your area. I'm the taster. You're going to be giving us all we need to know about this wonderful bottle of wine in front of us. Yes. So I brought out a Chateau St. Michel Rosé for us to get started. Um, Rosé wines and the style in which they're made present a lot of acid inside the wine. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to cause us to salivate and actually get us really excited taste bud wise for what's coming the main show, which mm -hmm. is an understanding of Sauvignon Blanc and how it interacts and how we treat our local delicacy conch. Uh -huh. um, so this is from Washington State, 2018 is the vintage, so still relatively young and fresh. Mm -hmm. For rosé wines, we try to have them consumed within three to four year window. Okay. Um, so that's going to be a heavy push. You're going to see a lot of Chateau Saint Michel this year as we push towards getting the new vintage. Mm -hmm. But I like the treatment of rosé wines. It gives a little bit of the floral and, and, and red berry characteristics in the wine, mm -hmm. but the acid literally has you smacking, mm -hmm. looking for another sip kind of thing. So mm -hmm. let's dive in and see what we think. I agree. And one of the things you remembered was I love it mm -hmm. medium dry and, 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 and this is great. So good fruit character hits the front of the palate, mm -hmm. right? It's just a slight drying sensation in the mid palate, but then the acid is very nice and it's accented with those fruit characters on the end. Indeed. I mean, I, I just love a, a nice glass of rosé to wake up the palate kind of thing. And this is a wine that, that pairs nicely. Uh, um, we're going to be talking about the conch which is a local delicacy in the Bahamas. We're going to be talking about that. But what else does it pair well with? This is a light, crisp wine, so our light salads, you know, nice mixed greens. And if we're adding any apples and pecans and a little bit of strawberries or berries here and there. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it has enough body to sit on the side of a poultry dish as well. Okay. Right? So a nice roasted chicken, um, a nice said chicken breast mm -hmm. on top of a, a, a garden salad would be fantastic with this. But mm -hmm. it has enough acidity and a little bit of minerality to go with some seafood. Uh -huh. Inside of some shellfish, some shrimp, um, some conch, mm -hmm. um, some lobster. Um, as well as some fried snapple. Okay. Do fantastic with this wine. So as, as we are all trying to um, slim down mm. in, the, in the new mm. year, you know, there's always a, a push to, to um, at, the, at the beginning of the year to, to, to go into this um, weight loss kind of, of, of more, modality. More definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so this would be good. Um, served with any number of dishes that we that we um, are going to be Most consuming. Definitely. So we, mm -hmm. we, we, we're very health conscious, like you said at the beginning of the year. So lots of salads. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we're all about the chicken breast as our preferred protein. Mm -hmm. right? We're trying trying to find protein with less fats and so on and so forth. Um, and so a sip of this glass on the side of any of those weight watching dishes, if you want to call them that, mm -hmm. I think this will be fantastic. Now, overindulging on this could still be a health concern. Oh, of course. <laughs> but at the right quantity, uh -huh. the right pairing, it's an enjoyable And it's moment. served chilled. And it's served chilled. Now, you have some other wines on the table. Um, yeah. Let's talk about those um, as we um, move along. Because, again, we want to have some variety. Oh, and, and one of the things Bristol Wines and Spirits offers us is a wide selection of some of the best wines on the island. So let's talk about um, Most definitely. those two over there. These two over here, uh, we're going to have an in-depth experience with them and some of the dishes we'll get to in the next segment. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have the Crossing Sauvignon Blanc. Which let's is pull that closer. Most definitely. Let me just, let me just feel it. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is from New Zealand, and New Zealand mm -hmm. is really leading the charge on Sauvignon Blanc right okay. now. Right? Uh -huh. uh, it's a 
it's a mix of love and hate, right? There's a musty aroma, but then there's some fantastic tropical elements that come through at the end. Mm -hmm. But very good acidity and good minerality. Uh -huh. All characteristics of good food wine. And I mean, I love Sauvignon Blanc and its ability to cut through some textural stuff. Mm -hmm. We'll speak about that when those dishes come out. Mm -hmm. um, but this is just a very nice, expressive New Zealand style Sauvignon Blanc. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't, um Normally, we hear Australian wines, mm -hmm. I, so I guess their neighbors decided that they would get into the game of, of producing definitely. some really good good wines as well. And they did an awesome job in finding great varieties that fit cl climate and, and, and terroir, mm -hmm. and literally the world around is trying to mimic that style of Sauvignon Blanc. Okay. Right? Uh, inside France, in the Loire Valley, we have some other different styles like Sancerre's and Puy Fumés, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more mineral driven, mm -hmm. um, but this, the expression of this, the tropical fruit, the acidity, the minerality, it just brings it together and it makes it a fantastic pairing with our local conch. Wonderful. And of course, any other, any other dish that we, we may want to, to try. Okay, so it's the crossings. That's the crossings, Sauvignon Blanc. And this one is... So we have your, a 90-point wine enthusiast wine, Josh Sellers. Mm -hmm. uh, Josh is from uh, California. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is from the South Coast. So there's a little bit of warmth and some cool effect coming off of the coastal area there. Uh -huh. But this is our Josh. very good, solid interpretation of a North American Sauvignon Blanc, okay. right? The mm -hmm. fruits are a little bit riper in this, so we mm -hmm. get a little bit more of a richer texture. Uh -huh. uh, we get a little bit more fruit concentration on the front end of the palate, but then again, that minerality and that acid, synonymous with Sauvignon Blanc, mm -hmm. um, and that's what makes it a, a, a So if you, wanna, if you want to show off a little bit, you would, yeah. you would take a, a bottle of this as opposed to the crossings. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it depends on who you're showing off to. Right? But, but you yes. know, Valentine is, is fast approaching. And Most so, um, gentlemen and, um, and ladies, you, you may want to just impress someone with a bottle of, of Josh well, and, and, and all the crossings. I'm Especially if you're cro in the crossroads <laughs> with your relationship, <laughs> you may want to... <laughs> Right. You, I would advise you to take the crossings. Conversation mm -hmm. on Valentine, for absolutely, sure. <laughs> absolutely. But I like the fact that Josh, you know, at the price point, is still able to hit ninety points, which mm -hmm. speaks to quality. But finding that balance and its approachability and availability to a wider spectrum in the market. Kind so of thing. the points. Now that that's interesting. You. Um, so how do you how do you um, so, come up with the point system so there, for wines? Let us tell us about that. There are numerous organizations and wine professionals who have pointing systems. Mm -hmm. um, some a little bit more respected than the others mm -hmm. but um we look at names like james sucklin mm -hmm. right we look at uh establishments like wine enthusiasts uh wine spectator mm -hmm. and they have a board of folks who would come and blind taste wines mm -hmm. and based on criteria expectation uh typicity of a particular grape variety mm -hmm. they would score based on what they see what they smell what they taste how it how it fits in that profile and give it a score mm -hmm. um and then that's averaged out based on that board uh -huh. and um, so whenever especially when you see something like wine enthusiasts or wine spectator and you know that it's a board right uh, i'm more inclined to listen to or uh, uh, investigate what they're saying because it's more pilots involved as absolutely opposed to one individual one. Who, yes you know, mm -hmm. uh, and so the higher the score right. the better the wine so some folks go out of five some folks go to ten mm -hmm. um, but the majority of folks in their wine point system go to 100 oh right? i and see we, okay we give 10 to 15 points on each category site um taste um uh, mouthfeel, finish, mm -hmm. um, grape variety, and so on, and then they apply their point system to it. Mm -hmm. And of course, that could be a little political inside the wine industry. Uh, so everything <laughs> is, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and we do certain things to play certain games, uh -huh. but uh, you know, generally speaking, when we see a, a board that's blind tasted a wine and come up with some outstanding points, mm -hmm. nine out of ten times that wine won't disappoint. Then th that that is something <laughs> to remember. N normally, you wouldn't walk into a retail um, establishment and see a 90 on, on a bottle. So where would you look on a bottle for that kind of a, a, a scoring? So we try to do an awesome job with putting these necks on the bottle. So uh -huh. first and foremost, when you come into our wine store and you see something on the neck of this bottle and not on the neck of that bottle, you uh -huh. want to investigate. Right. Right. So we kind of draw your attention and then we outline, well, Who's the wine? So this necker says there's Josh, mm -hmm. who graded them the 90 points. It was the wine enthusiast. Mm -hmm. And the category that they were graded in was Best Buy. And all of this is on this little all card of, right all here. All of that is on that card. Kind of so you want, you want to look for this. If you don't see this on a bottle, <laughs> it's suspect, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so, 
And, and that's, that's something that I learned today. I, did, I didn't really know that um, about the point system. And so I think that's a, that's a good feature yeah. to have. And it's a good selling point, obviously. Uh, I was just going to say it's um, good to brag about. It, yeah, it's something to brag about. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be right back when we bring the food out <laughs> that's going to be paired with these wonderful blends that we have in front of us today. Today we are talking about Sauvignon Blanc. And we're here with Mr. Kyle Stubbs from Bristol Wines and Spirits. And um, we're going to bring the Kong dishes out next. <laughs> so let's do that. We will be right back. Hi, so welcome back. What we have in front of us right now is, oh, it smells delicious. But it's one of the local dishes in the Bahamas called conch. And um, we're going to talk about how we pair conch with Sauvignon Blanc and we're talking about the crossings wine that we featured a little earlier today and um, our resident sommelier Mr. Snubs is going to really get into how this wine bounces off and, and the tastes combine um, to, to give us this beautiful mouth-watering kind of feel so absolutely we have we have comforters we have a cracker mm -hmm. and we have some conch salad. Mm -hmm. And while he is talking, I'm going to be tasting. Absolutely. I don't have to talk for this session. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's talk about this, Mr. Stubbs. Absolutely. So we mentioned we have a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, mm -hmm. right? And I, what I want us to do, Dr. Roll, is just to take a sip of it there. Uh, yes. Even as I put it to my mouth, I can get the herbaceous and grassy notes on the, on, of the aroma. Yes. And we spoke about on the palate, the minerality in the mid palate and the acid on the side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just want to speak briefly, you know, we all know how we produce in our own individual way, our conch salad, our crack conch and our conch fritters. Mm -hmm. But I want to speak to acid and fatty and oily foods, okay. right? Which mm -hmm. the crack conch and the conch fritters fall into. Right. As well as the herbaceousness and the acid and how it accentuates the herbs inside our conch salad. Correct. Now, this is a conch salad from one of my local spots, favorite spots, no pepper, right? So we want to enjoy the conch flavor and all of the herbs that come to it. Because I can't do too much pepper. There we go. Um, and <laughs> and then in some other circles, we call this ceviche. Yes, yes right. definitely. So, so just in know, case folks who don't know what it, what it is, it's, it's similar to that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And right, it's just, you know, the seafood and a little bit of an acidic uh, liquid kind of thing. And for us, we squeeze a lot of lime and, and orange on our, on mm -hmm. our conch salad. Mm -hmm. um, the craft conch, of course, is us for us to batter it and coat it and then to deep fry it. So we bring some oily, fatty situation. So we need the acid in this wine to cut through. And I want you to remember, this is also a chef. <laughs> he has training. He's a trained qualified credentialed <laughs> chef so he knows exactly how these foods are prepared and what he's talking about so let's listen to him oh yeah <laughs> absolutely and we did the same thing with our comfort as a different style of a bottle mm -hmm. right again deep fried and coated so we want the acid to cut through the oiliness and the coating of that and get us to enjoy that breadiness and the conch flavor inside the conch fritter. Okay. So what I want us to do, Dr. Will, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. we're going to go dish by dish. Let's yes. take a sip of the Sauvignon Blanc uh -huh. and a quick little spoon or fork of the conch salad and see what that experience Okay, is. sip first. I love that. Sip. And pull this closer. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that you don't have any pepper in it. I don't do pepper well. Mm. And then come right back behind as it goes down a little mm -hmm. with another sip. Okay. Mm -hmm. Symmetry. Nothing, nothing stands out, right? Nothing really abrases the palate. Not at all. In fact, it, it helps to go, go down a little nicer. Mm -hmm. it, it, it literally softens the texture on the counter, mm -hmm. right? Um, but if we were to just grab a piece of conch itself without any herbs, mm -hmm. right, and come back with another sip of this glass, mm -hmm. we get that genuine sea salt flavor that we get from conch. Excellent. Uh, that, that minerality. It's the mm -hmm. minerality in the wine, the minerality from that from calcium the stuff from the conch on, yes. on, the, on, the, on the shell on, on the seafloor. Mm -hmm. 
I saw you enjoy Kongs. Kong. That's how you go. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's how you enjoy Kongs. So it, it, it's different from drinking. A lot of people drink beer yeah, most with, with Kong yeah, salad. And it, it, it's, it's a setting, it's a mood, it's an environment. Mm -hmm. um, but an experience. Uh huh. For the experience up, of it, you want to have a crossings or another kind of Sauvignon Blanc that has a high mineral content to enjoy the calcium in the conch. Right. So, really, so I'm gonna need a little bit yes, more wine to, to do more, the other stuff. You I'm know? gonna give you a little bit more of the crossings for the uh, crack conch and then we're gonna do some Josh on the comfort. Okay, good. Very good. Awesome. I hope I'm not drinking too much more than you are. <laughs> I'm enjoying right. myself more than you. So we're going to okay. do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Another sip with the enjoyment Another sip. of that uh, Sauvignon Blanc. We're going to come with a piece of our uh, crack conch. Mm -hmm. And we have some nice homemade tartar sauce there on the side. And tell the audience what tartar sauce is. Tartar sauce is How do you make a good one? Because <laughs> you know. <laughs> tartar sauce is a, yeah, you're very right. It has to be a good tartar sauce. Mm -hmm. It is a mayonnaise-based sauce, which we find inside our uh, comforter sauce as well. So mm -hmm. it just speaks to the simplicity of it. Um, people add, uh, or oh, it's slipping my mind now. Pickles. Sure. pickles, there you go. Pickles. Add pickles to, you know, a little bit more complexity to the sauce kind of thing. Um, your regular hot pepper and some lime mm -hmm. and kind of thing. But sauce is, is what really leads the culinary world right now. Mm -hmm. We appreciate the proteins in their, in their fulfillment, mm -hmm. but it's all about the mother sauces and taking it a step up from there. Um, sauces really bring a dish together and mm -hmm. it also makes the wine addition. Because you don't want anything to compete with wine. No, no. And so, you know, the subtlety of the tartar sauce mm -hmm. in this setting actually is, is better because you really want to be able to enjoy the wine. I mean, and it's doing the same thing I did with the conch salad. It's bringing flavors down, it's breaking on the texture of the, the conch, conch mm -hmm. and it's sliding to the back of the palate. And even though, even though the, the conch, the crack conch in this case, has a breaded, mm -hmm. a breaded coating, you're not tasting that as much as you're actually tasting the, the conch. Uh, the acid cuts right through it. Absolutely. So I, again, that's mm -hmm. a fantastic seven year blanc and crack conch. Yes. I, mm -hmm. That is cool. Let's have a little bit more of that. Let me yeah. just make sure it's what I'm tasting. <laughs> yeah, I think that crack on that tartar sauce and that crossing is just good. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to bring Josh to the table. Mm -hmm. Again, that's North American, so fruit forward, but still the acidity kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We like that palate. A lot of people are iffy, some, I don't say a lot, some people are iffy on craft tongue. Mm -hmm. Some people are iffy on the raw conch salad. Uh -huh. But I think one thing that people don't turn their head to is... Comforters. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take a comforter kind of thing. Yes. Right, so I think if this being the preferred choice for the majority of folks, then a wine that hits the palate mm -hmm. for a majority of folks, I think is it. But again, still along the same lines of what we want from a Southern Le Blanc. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going to pour out a little bit uh, Josh. Now, Kyle, there are there are some um, viewers who, of course, don't like conch. Okay. What's a good substitute for them? Uh, or, or can they have? I know the Adventist, for example. The herb salad without the conch, mm -hmm. fantastic again. Mm -hmm. don't, don't forget, we spoke originally about the herbaceousness of Sauvignon Blanc. Mm -hmm. So I think you know just the herbs itself without the conch. So mm -hmm. we're not worried about the acid cutting through the conch and giving us a sea salt flavor. We're mm -hmm. just looking for the acid in the wine to cancel out the acid in the herb salad right. and then everything else is just flavor. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that's for the Adventist friends mm -hmm. and you're enjoying a glass of wine, your herb salad is quite... quite well, of course, for people who can't get the conch. Mm -hmm. And those who can't get the conch. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I was going to say a suggestion, but a, a, a substitution, uh, but it will be for those who don't like conch, but, but take something else. But for those who can't get conch, they probably won't be able to get the world side mm -hmm. But a nice world salad would be fantastic on the side of a New Zealand mm -hmm. It's just fantastic. Um, so we're going to talk about the conch fritter, which is which is our next food item on this on this on this board. I know in some other Caribbean islands, they do a fritter, but not right necessarily a, a conch fritter. fritter. 
and um, so, so let's talk about the Kong fritter, right? So we, you know, we're speaking about the Kong fritter here. Um, you know, generally we can speak about fritters in general uh -huh. right? throughout the Caribbean. Um, you know, whether it's corn fritter, lobster fritter, just a breaded fritter, mm -hmm. we do fritters well throughout the Caribbean yes. for our region. Mm -hmm. um, so if we were to take the conch out, it's still all about the acid inside the Sauvignon Blancs to cut through the texture. Right? Uh -huh. We're talking about a bready dough-like texture that we need to get through because we want to experience what's in that. Right. Right. The pepper, the herbs, and everything else that would have made that. Mm -hmm. If it was corn, if it was lobster, in this case, it's conch. Conch. So uh -huh. first and foremost, we want to cut through the texture and get to the conch. Mm -hmm. And then we want to do what we've done with the crack conch and the conch salad. Mm -hmm. Make that conch a little bit more enjoyable. Break yes. through the texture, let mm -hmm. it slide down like it's a liquid. Mm -hmm. Give us a genuine sea salt flavor and enjoy all of that at the same time. Mm -hmm. And principally enjoy the wine that Most we have. Definitely. And we have a... This is Josh. Josh. We're drinking a Josh with this um, Kong fritter today. Absolutely. So we'll do the same thing. We'll take a sip. Now listen, we're using fork and knife. It doesn't but happen. But normally... <laughs> And I'm gonna do I'm gonna do what we do at home. You know. Let's make it up. Yeah, let's let's just go natural man. Let's we're gonna we're gonna pick up pick up the comforter with our fingers because it tastes better with the fingers. Most definitely. Mm hmm Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with bear and Mm-hmm. But it's everything right with Southern Leblanc and Conk. Everything is right with it. It yeah. actually tastes... <laughs> it, you know, these, now these fritters are a little spicy. So, this wine is actually helping to neutralize right. that spice. Yeah. Again, that's the fruit character from the extremely ripe fruit from California, which is a warm climate. So mm -hmm. again, slightly different than the first serving of Long Lady Act. Mm -hmm. So because you have that ripe fruit character, mm -hmm. right, which means a little bit of an extra sugar, residual sugar left in the back, and just that little piece of sweetness is uh -huh. enough to tame the, the, the hot pepper inside this So you can have your fritters as hot as you want it. <laughs> just know that you have a Sauvignon Blanc that can neutralize some of the heat and make it all palatable for you. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a delight, a delightful afternoon pairing conch, various conch dishes with delightful bottles of Sauvignon Blanc, the crossings and the Josh. So we want to invite you to certainly patronize Bristol, of course. They have a wide selection of wines and spirits. And we want to thank Mr. Kyle Stubbs for joining me in the conversation this afternoon. The pleasure is always mine, Dr. Rod. Always mine. Indeed. Thank you so much. And we will see you again very soon for when we cook with wine. Absolutely. That's our next segment. We're going to be cooking with wine. Absolutely. And um, we want to invite you into my kitchen. So until then, see you. Bye.